Now we're happy to have here today with us um, Ambassador to Bul U.S. Ambassador to Bulgaria, Hiro Mustafa. Uh, our members and the public at large have heard, have heard her speaking many, many times on, on rule of law. I think fight against corruption uh, was one of our top three priorities. I remember from your first speech, uh, Ambassador, uh, when you arrived in Bulgaria. Uh, we've been fortunate to have you here uh, with us for almost three years. You're about to, to leave the country, so very uh, you know, happy and, uh, and uh, excited to, to hear your words uh, right now about the uh, uh, fight against uh, corruption and rule of law in Bulgaria. Thank you, Ambassador. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Minister Zarkov, my friends, ambassadors from France, from Italy, Charge from Germany, my partners from the American Chamber, Olivier, and also Mr. Matthew Murray, who is here. It's an honor to have you all here and to share this stage today. I'd like to start by thanking the American Chamber for organizing today's event. And I'd, I'd like you all just to take a minute to absorb what you're seeing today, which is a gathering of the British, French, German, Swiss, Greek, Swedish, Italian business organizations. The fact that you have all of us here, this hasn't happened before, to come together to talk about rule of law. Just take a minute to absorb that. In addition to having these entities, we're here with our partners, the Bulgarian organizations, who are also very involved in fighting for this issue. We're here with members of the NGO community. We're here with members of the business community and other diplomats. So I want to say thank you for continuing to make this issue a priority. Rule of law, as you have already heard, remains one of the most important challenges here today. We, we all know that. That's why we are here. When we speak of rule of law, I think of it as the principle that all people and institutions are accountable to the laws. This is a topic very close to my heart. And as I close out my three and a half years here in Bulgaria, and I look back, I think first of all the successes that Bulgaria has had in this period. With the COVID crisis, the fact that you successfully emerged from, from that pandemic, you've started OECD, a session process, put relations with North Macedonia on a constructive path, and some things that honestly I thought were once impossible, like diversifying away from Russian energy, have happened with remarkable speed. So as we, the United States, mark our 120th anniversary this year with Bulgaria, I leave proud of the fact that our relations have never been stronger. And I am confident that Bulgaria is better positioned today for long-term success than it ever has been. The one area, however, where I regret we have not seen as much progress is in the area of rule of law. And I say that with full 
honesty. The fact that we are all gathered today is a success, but for those of us who care so much about this issue with our partners, we need to do more. Now, it's not for a lack of effort, both on the part of the Bulgarian people, Bulgarians' international partners, but we have seen firsthand just how incredibly hard it is to reform institutions and to root out deeply entrenched interests. You heard from Olivier who said that one of my priorities is corruption. And before coming to Bulgaria in all of my introductory meetings, many Bulgarian officials said to me, don't use that C word. <laughs> that C word, don't use that C word. Corruption, it's a non-starter. It'll ruin my relationship with the government. It will set me up for failure. However, I would speak to Bulgarians and to institutions, and the first thing they would say that's a top concern for them is corruption. Businesses, civil society, journalists, average people would say corruption is an issue that we are having difficulty dealing with. So of course, I had to make this a priority for me. And it's a priority for the Biden administration. Now, some of you might ask, why do I care so much? Because I do personally care. Why do I care so much? I care because True friends, true partners, true allies work together to build each other up. And when Bulgaria is strong, we are strong. And true partners speak honestly with one another. So I am here to say I am a true friend of Bulgaria, and I always will be. So if you'll allow me to speak honestly with you today about some of the issues that I continue to care about. Those of you in the business community, you know how high the stakes are. We have heard, and I know the other chambers have heard, from so many investors that see tremendous potential here in Bulgaria, but they fear that their rights will not be upheld if they ever are in a legal dispute. We hear stories about businesses that are targeted by powerful individuals. They use state institutions to harass, to intimidate, to extort opponents. We hear of suitcase lawyers backroom deals, kickbacks. We hear of untransparent procurement practices, tailored tender specifications, and favoritism in government contracts. We hear that from our companies, so we know this firsthand. In Bulgaria, we have seen that corruption has fundamentally distorted how some institutions function and who controls them, and that is to the detriment of the Bulgarian people. And we understand that tackling corruption is a long-term project. It's not easy. No country, not even my own, not even the United States, is immune from corruption. Constant vigilance is required to combat it. Now, our national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, summed up our anti-corruption strategy as fundamentally boiling down to two lines of efforts. First, helping the good guys, and second, going after the bad guys. In terms of helping the good guys, there is 
plenty to support in Bulgaria, and we have done this along with our American partners. I know so many of the other chambers have done this, and that means increasing our training and assistance to judicial and law enforcement officials, and even just over the past three years, our justice resident legal advisor has delivered over 50 capacity building programs in Bulgaria. They've trained over 1,000 prosecutors, investigators, judges, legal professionals. We've sent Bulgarian experts to the United States on professional exchange programs. We've brought in new international and American NGOs to work on anti-corruption issues at the national level, at the municipal level, and we're helping to build the capacity of local civil society working on these issues through USAID grants, training, technical assistance, and that is all in addition to the wonderful work that the America for Bulgaria Foundation has been doing on this issue. We also support the work of investigative journalists, and I'm proud to say that it was a Bulgarian journalist who won the State Department's prestigious Anti-Corruption Champions Award in 2021. We bring up rule of law in almost every single meeting that we have with Bulgarian officials, and we're constantly looking for allies at all levels of the government. And again, I want to be clear, we believe that the overwhelming majority of Bulgarian law enforcement officials, prosecutors, investigators, judges, members of parliament, public officials, they're good, honest people who are drawn to public service, just like we are, out of a genuine desire to help out. And the challenge, unfortunately, is a small minority has created a system that enriches an oligarchic class and captures state resources. I know that personally as I work with our businesses to try to counter this. And what happens for those who don't have that assistance, it creates a sense of hopelessness and it discourages those who want to fight for their country. Truly, it pains me to see that. We hear often from members of the judiciary and law enforcement committees who make valiant efforts to investigate and prosecute corruption only to have those investigations closed transferred to other offices or delayed indefinitely when they come too close to certain red lines. These public servants are denied promotions, they're transferred to faraway towns, and they're dismissed. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I'm just speaking the truth as your friend so that we all focus on this. Let me give you an example. Just the past few weeks, corruption investigations in Varna and Schumann were closed or transferred without publication of a legal basis. Did you know that? This is just an example of the past few weeks. We see cases languish in pretrial proceedings or trial for years, and some never even reach that stage. So this is why we move to the second line of effort, which is going after the bad guys, as we say, and to bring lasting change, we need to increase the cost of corruption. We have taken some steps as the US government to make it harder for corrupt actors to exploit the US financial system to advance corruption and to seize the proceeds of their crime. For those of you, uh, most of you already know this, but uh, during our uh, tenure here, 
we designated three Bulgarians under the Global Magnitsky Program, and we restricted the visas of six Bulgarians, all for corruption. I'm proud of these actions. We stand by those designations. Not a single one of them has been called out publicly for corruption. Those that we have called out, not a single one of them has been convicted of a crime in Bulgaria. Most have not even been disciplined from their positions. While we continue to use whatever tools we have as your partner to serve as a catalyst, we all know that change must come from within. Bulgarian politicians showing courage, in the words of Justice Minister, having the will. The citizens are demanding accountability from their government. Again, this is why events like today are so important. The business community in Bulgaria has tremendous influence in encouraging public discussion, in shaping policy, and suggesting actionable reforms to improve the business climate. We need a united effort, all of us coming together. You know I am an optimist. It's the American way. The American optimism. Again, as I look back on my three and a half years here, I remain hopeful because the fact that we are gathered, which even two years ago would have been taboo, means there is some progress. The Bulgarian people have said we need to tackle this issue. Parliament has before it now judicial reform legislation related to the European Recovery and Resilience Plan. And this legislation, I'm sure my colleagues, European colleagues will uh, address this as well, it responds to concrete recommendations from European institutions. I think it's time for, to show a little bit of political will to pass this legislation. Of course, once you pass it, has to be implemented, and not just implemented selectively, but fully. And that includes the reforms that the Europeans have re suggested for the office of the Prosecutor General. I think it's time to tackle these reforms. I believe in the coming years we will see forward momentum on improving procurement practices, creating a robust investment screening mechanism, and strengthening intellectual property rights protections. And I am optimistic that steps will be taken to decrease impunity for those who abuse the resources of the state. I encourage you all to continue advocating for these and other reforms, to hold your leaders to high standards, just like we try to do in the United States, and to demand from them courage and commitment. I believe your collective efforts will continue to lead Bulgaria in a better direction. And again, I am proud to be your partner and your friend in all of this. I wish you continued success in your endeavors and I look forward to working with you in my remaining small time left here. Thank you.